Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, wonderful to be here. Uh, Dr. Anurag Batra is quite simply incredible. He's a marathon man. He carries on even as the rest of the world seems to give up on news TV. And uh, to his great credit and that of the Exchange for Media team that they are able to put together this event and make it bigger and better every year. So a big hand to uh, Dr. Batra and Ruhel, Priyanka and the wonderful team at Exchange for Media. Thank you once again for inviting me here uh, to deliver an opening address. I've been asked by some former colleagues to keep it very short, which I will, so that they, because everyone apparently now works uh, to hard, hard time and wants uh, conversations to be kept, plus attention spans have become shorter. So I shall make every effort to keep it as short as possible. Elections 2024 in the age of hyperpolarization. This is an exciting time, some would say, to be a journalist. So I'm going to talk about the good news as always, but I'm also going to talk about the not so good news. It's because I thought that we should start this day of talking about news by being a little honest about ourselves and about honest about television news. So I'm going to talk about the glass half full, but the glass that's also half empty. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an exciting time to be a journalist. That's the good news. Because we're entering an election, and what better time than this great festival of democracy across the length and breadth of a subcontinental-sized country to connect with our netas and, more importantly, the voters of this wonderful country. It's also the one time when generally even the most stingy news organizations do spend a bit on news gathering sending their reporters to the ground, as a result of which ground reports for once can actually compete for attention with the studio babble that we hear night after night with the same guests in our studio. It is also for me a, a bit of a nostalgic election. It will be my 10th general election. Who knows, it could be my final one. The first one was 1989. It was famously the VP Singh election. It was a terrific election to observe. You know, we often believe that, or the younger generation believes Indian politics started in 2014. It didn't. The 1989 election, VP Singh versus Rajiv Gandhi was a classic Indian election. It was the pre-computer age, the pre-internet, the pre-mobile age. It was an age when you covered an election with the note paper, and pen or notepad and pen. You went back to office, typewriter, no pressure of breaking news. You could actually enjoy a long lunch with Netas on the campaign trail. Actually, I'm a bit lucky because I still do that, which is why I called my program Elections on My Plate. Because I believe the best thing about India is the food. So you discover food through elections, but that was a quieter time. It was a gentler age. This generation is in some ways far more fortunate. Technology has made it that much easier for you to be in any corner of the country and uplink your story through a live view kit that you might have. And news is in real time. All geographical barriers have been broken. You could be in Sikkim one day, you could be in Kashmir the next, you could be in Kanyakumari the third, and you just have your kit, mojo kit or live view kit, and you can uplink your story from any part of the world. We couldn't do that. So you're a lucky generation as we enter this election season. Now that is the good news. And that's where the good news, my friends, sadly ends. Let's turn to the not so good news. This election is taking place arguably in the most hyper-polarized atmosphere in newsrooms and outside. Make no mistake, that 1989 election that I spoke to you about, about Rajiv Gandhi versus VP Singh, was just as bitter and far more frenetic, some would say, than the elections of today. It was the classic election between the top dog and the underdog. But the interesting bit is it did not affect the newsroom. We gave almost as much space to Rajiv Gandhi as we did to VP Singh. 
In fact, there I say we gave more space to VP Singh because journalism in those days believed you must stand with the underdog, not with the top dog. That was the difference between 1989 and 2024. The journalist would come excitedly back to the newsroom after having covered a VP Singh rally because he was the new person on the block. As I said, elections were just as frenetic as they are today. In fact, it was the pre-electronic voting age as well. I recall an election in Mayhem, not too far away, here in Haryana, where ballot boxes were stolen, journalists were beaten up, television cameras were broken. So if anyone tells you it was a gentler age, it wasn't quite a gentler age. Sorry? But it was an age where I think somewhere down the line, journalists did not allow what was happening in our outside to affect what was happening in the newsroom. Now, as we saw a trailer in 2019, the newsroom is almost wholly monopolized at election time and dare I say round the year by the top dog, not the underdog. One man, one party, one idea. We talk as journalists of having a level playing field in every area or every other arena. Level playing field hona chahiye. How much do we attempt to ensure even the semblance of a level playing field in our own profession is a question that we must all ask ourselves if we have a conscience left. A survey in the 2019 election showed that 80%, 80% of prime time was monopolized by one man and one party. Please show me a genuine democratic society where the news ecosystem will donate 80% of your time to one individual. Unless you want to be compared with a democracy or an autocracy rather like Russia or a Hungary or a Turkey. India is not that. This is one of the world's greatest democracies, plural, diverse. If we as journalists cannot respect that pluralism and diversity, we do not deserve the respect or the status of being journalists. Then you might as well become a pamphleteer or a PR artist. Journalism was not meant to be that. What is even more troubling, my friends, is that now it is almost demanded, I use the word demanded, of journalists to take sides. Partisanship is rewarded, especially in this age of social media, where opinion has taken over from facts, where the space for so-called objective journalism is shrinking and shrinking fast. If you want your Insta clip to go viral, if you want your debate to be talked about, then whether it's on digital or whether it is on TV, if you want to get the maximum retweets, you are expected to say something controversial and as partisan as possible. Therefore, navigating this hyper-polarized ecosystem is not easy. Let's not minimize the challenge that is faced by journalists. You will, if you stay that course, you will be, stay the course of journalism today. You will be called names. You will be branded Godi one day, Darbari next day. Even worse, you will be called anti-national, denied access. Maybe even not get your prized photo up with the home minister or the prime minister at the next glitzy conclave in the Imperial Hotel. You may even have your reporting being censored. And who knows, you may have to start one day your own YouTube channel since mainstream media will have less and less space for dissenters. But let me say this, and let me say this emphatically. Even in this age, as one editor recently called it, the unease of doing journalism, I strangely enough remain a believer which is why I'm still doing the same thing 35 years later that I was doing in 1988. 
राजीव गांधी चले गए वीपी सिंह चले गए नरेंद्र मोदी जी को पहली बार 1990 में मिला था इन रथ यात्रा एंड द वन टाइम रिसेंटली बना मैठे माइटोलिम सर आप तो वहां चले गए हम तो वहीं के वही रह गए बट दैट इज द जॉब ऑफ अ जर्नलिस्ट द जर्नलिस्ट इज द कॉकरोच इन द सिस्टम ही इज नॉट मेंट टू बी द बटरफ्लाई आई थिंक मेनी ऑफ अस मेड दैट मिस्टेक एंड कन्फ्लेटेड आवर पॉपुलैरिटी ऑन टीवी व्हिच सडनली बिकमिंग द बटरफ्लाईज इन द सिस्टम इफ यू कैन रिमेन द कॉकरोच you can still stay in the system i call myself a believer because i believe that journalism must take sides but the side that journalists must take at election time in particular is the side of the constitution and the side of your conscience if you take the side of the constitution and the side of the con of your conscience you can still do journalism we have the constitution my friends as our holy book so tell as many stories as you can tell them without fear or favor hold those in power full positions accountable expose hate speech expose the misuse of power question institutions that are seen to brazenly abuse their powers even if it is an institution that is called ed and i don't refer to the election uh, department but the enforcement directorate tell the stories most importantly of ordinary indians those who have benefited and those who have lost out tell both stories tell the stories of netas who have kept their promises and of netas who have not the fight my friends that we are fighting as journalists is not between government and opposition we don't have a skin in the game someone may said ab ki bar 400 par someone will say ab ki bar 50 par that's their job let them make all the noise that they want it's their battle to win it is not our fight as journalists to win or lose but our fight is another far more important fight because politicians will come and go the constitution of this country must be preserved of india as a democratic diverse society not one where at every time on prime time you will have anchors who will use their platform to spread hate to spread prejudice to demonize communities that is simply unacceptable and if you do that to my mind you are committing no less than a criminal act my friends it is a crime what you do and if you look into your conscience and ask yourself and see sometimes the way you put your headlines and the way you put your top bands ask yourself and wrestle with that sea that i spoke about constitution and conscience will lead to the third c above all else the one which should be most valuable for journalists which is credibility ask yourselves why have we lost that credibility and if you can answer that question and sleep well at night maybe you will find it easy to do journalism even in this hyper polarized age thank you very much